So as promised, we are making that beeline straight from my favorite car set, and that favorite car set is currently owned by Keiko, but we're soon going to take all of her cars from her. Except we won't, because apparently she has backups, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do the group races. You could technically have challenged Keiko and her races as soon as you had access to the map, but it would have been a little difficult without a beefed up car. Trying to win her cars using the taxi can be impossible unless she completely goofs up. Which I'm not saying that can't happen, it has happened to me at least once. And I got lucky in one using the taxi, but I wouldn't pin your hopes on that. The car we're driving right now isn't my favorite or anything, but it has three nitro boosters and it's reasonably fast, so we should be able to take at least her first car away from her with ease. And probably her second and third cars, but we're gonna switch over to her car set as early as possible because I simply prefer how they control. Have I told you by the way that these sections where you have to chase down the hookmen are my least favorite sections in the game? Because it is true. Thankfully Keiko slows down significantly on this turn around the building up here, that way we'll actually be able to catch up with her. But still, it's a little annoying. She also takes you for quite a ride the first time you have to chase her. You go through quite a bit of obstacles, it's a long route, and uh... Excuse me. You go through quite- excuse me. You go through quite a bit of obstacles, it's a long route, and it ends with you driving straight through a warehouse, so... It can be a little harrowing. Our nitro boosters should help us keep up with her, and inevitably she's going to smash into cars and do 180 degree turns at some point. We should just accept that. We should be careful transitioning between the grass and the road. Our car isn't light by any means, but were we driving a lighter car, we could easily get tipped over. Depending on how fast we're moving, of course. And especially when coming out of the water. You have to be right on top of her this whole chase, and it doesn't help that there's this long straight road toward the end of the chase and then she suddenly cuts right through the middle of a warehouse without any warning. Thankfully, the other times you have to chase her down aren't nearly this unpredictable. And after you know what she's up to, of course, you can memorize the route she takes, but... There's still that good old AI unpredictability of her smashing into random objects. Thankfully, the warehouse is the very last bit of the chase. As with the other group races, most of the time we're going to follow Keiko's car, which leads us straight through the warehouse we already drove through. The path through is fairly straightforward, but if you do bump into anything, you might want to restart because you're likely to get pinballed around. So Keiko's races really have a thing for making you zigzag down different alleys. Although on the map you could reasonably draw a straight line between all the yellow dots, that's not how it plays out when you're actually driving. The downside is that if you're not used to cornering yet, this can be really difficult and frustrating. The upside is that if you're not used to cornering yet, this will get you used to cornering, because you have to be used to cornering to win her races. It's basically just one 90 degree turn after another. And cornering in this game is the thing I'm best at. It may not seem like it at times, but I can still take the corners with much better reliability than the AI can. They seem to slow down to such a significant degree. You won, so I'll be polite. Your clothes are great, and your breath ain't so bad. Here's my number. Call when you want to race, anytime, night or night. Now that we've beaten Keiko's first group race, we've gained access to her cell phone and we can challenge her for one of her cars. 
As I said, we're going to be switching over to her car set as soon as possible, even though her first car is a little bit inferior to the one we're driving right now. Don't worry, we'll still be able to beat her, though. If you recall, I said that Keiko's races really have a thing for making you zigzag. Well, here's another excellent example of that. This is a short race, though, so I find it's best to get in front of her at the start. During longer races, the AI has a greater chance of goofing up at some point, but when the races are as short as this, you want to get ahead as soon as possible and stay ahead. Because there's not a lot of time for you to play catch-up. This is one of the shorter races in the game. And once again, it gets you very used to the cornering, because if you're not used to the cornering, then this race will be hell. But after we're done here, we'll get to move on to my favorite set of cars. You made it! I let you win! It's only polite! So we're going to change cars to the one we just won, but I'm going to cut out the garage segment because I just select the same car you're seeing on screen right now and change its paint coat to red. That's all I do. So this race, surprisingly enough, isn't all that zigzaggy. It may seem it at first, but there are actually quite a few places where we can cut diagonally across a street or two, which means that there are far less 90 degree turns. Now arguably instead, the difficulty in this race comes from actually using those shortcuts across the streets. For example, right here we're going to cut through the park in the center of the road, instead of going across the road like a normal human would because Keiko does the exact same thing, and if we don't take the same shortcut, we'll fall behind. But after you know which shortcuts to take, then this race should be a breeze, because you just have to take the shortcuts better than her. Hopefully you're already noticing that the Piranha series is a lot more smooth in control. It's also very compact, makes it easy to squeeze between cars. It can seem really touchy if you're not used to it, though. So now, of course, we're going to switch to the second car in the Piranha series, the one that we just won. It's basically a straight upgrade of the first car, so there should be no worries about transitioning properly. Are we racing or what? Ah, uh, here it is, the race for my favorite car in the game, the final car in the Piranha series, and the most difficult head-to-head -head race in Keiko's arsenal. It's definitely doable, but the car Keiko is driving currently has Nitro Boosters, and she will frequently use those to get ahead of you. Fortunately, the AI is much worse at using them than you will be. There are at least a couple of places where you do need to cut across the grass to reach a checkpoint faster. I wouldn't say you have to follow Keiko to figure out where those places are, but knowing where they are is definitely important. The most difficult stretch of the level is right here, when you drop down onto the lower pathway. It's a very long straight shot, and Keiko's car is faster than yours, so if you're not already ahead of her, you're probably not going to get ahead of her before the end of the race. You need to get ahead of her early on in the race, or else you're doomed. But now that we're already ahead of her and we're in the final stretch, we just have one big 90 degree turn to make right here. And then we're in the clear. Look at how smooth that turn went. And unless something terrible happens, we just won my favorite car. I let you win, it's only polite. Be 
They didn't quite catch that, but she said something about it being undignified to race us or something like that. We're gonna go to the garage real quick before we cruise for some action and take down Keiko's remaining uh, group races. I didn't show the garage the last two times, but I will this time so you can see the whole Piranha series as well as my favorite car, and uh, this is going to be the last car we use for quite a while. There's only one more car set we're going to transition to in the whole game, so get used to seeing this next car. Just gonna boop on over. And here we are, the Piranha PDQ-ARI, or just the RE. It makes significant sacrifices in speed for increased handling, and it has five Nitro Boosters. The handling is just in the right spot I'm most comfortable with. Those five Nitro Boosters, I believe, are the max amount of Nitro Boosters available in any given car. And it doesn't hurt that the car has great acceleration. So even if we do goof up one of the corners, we'll be fine. Ah, oh, this feels so much smoother. Oh shit, fuck. So this is a downside to driving the RE. The car is incredibly light, so you're liable to get flying if you take ramps. It's for this reason that we're going to avoid ramps and bumps whenever possible while driving the RE, though this shouldn't be too difficult as we are racing on streets, and ideally there aren't a lot of bumps and ramps in the street. This game is called Midnight Club Street Racing, not Midnight Club Off-Road Racing. If it were about off-road racing, this would be one of the worst cars to choose, but because this game is all about cornering and straightways, it's perfectly acceptable. Did I mention it's also my favorite car in the game? Because it is. Those five Nitro Boosters are incredibly helpful. We are going to run into a lot of cars that are simply faster than us, though. Such is the downside of choosing this car set for most of the game. If we wanted a faster, more durable, and uh, heavier car set, then there's an option for that, and that would be uh, Larry's cars. And I know a lot of people prefer Larry's trucks over the Piranha series, but I personally go for handling over raw speed and power. That's not to say one is more valid than the other by any means. But I think my preference for the Piranha set comes from my love of driving games. I get that this is a racing game, but there's a lot of driving game elements in it. And I really like being able to take corners well, because I have bad experiences with not being able to take corners well in driving games. I told you this chase was much easier. Even though the checkpoints in this race are seemingly all over the place, the most difficult shortcut you'll have to take is right here at the start. And with the new Ari, it's very easy to stay in the lead, so this is a good race to practice something that will become a valuable asset later in the game. You're gonna want to look at the map while you're driving. This may seem really stupid, but it's going to become very important later when the blue arrow above your head will inevitably lead you to a bad checkpoint. At first, the blue arrow may seem like a godsend. It's a great idea, right? It shows you where the nearest checkpoint is so you can go there without having to check the minimap. But the blue arrow will often point you to an inconvenient checkpoint later in the game, one that will take you a much longer period of time. So you're gonna have to learn to glance at the minimap while driving in this game. It's just a necessity, unless you memorize the entire track layout. Because as the races get progressively more non-linear, the more useless the blue arrow will become. Alright, with that out of the way, we only have one more group race left, and what do you say I do you a favor and cut to the part where we actually chase down Keiko instead of showing you the whole chase this time. So after we chase down Keiko and finish this group race, she will dis- ex excuse me, why did you just take a hard left into that wall? As I was saying, after we chase down Keiko and do this last group race for her, We'll have finished her, she'll disappear from the map, and we'll only have Larry and the City Champ. And we could challenge the City Champ immediately after finishing this next group race, but we're gonna take out Larry anyway, because as I said, I like this game 
And we're gonna finish all three hookmen. You think you all bad? You feel bad. So this group race teaches us something very important, and that important lesson is that when there are a bunch of checkpoints in a really odd clump with no seeming rhyme or reason, you want to start on the outward checkpoints and work your way inward like a spiral. You do not want to start at the end and go outward, because the goal checkpoint is usually inward. And if you start from the inside and work your way out, it's going to take way too long to get back to the gold checkpoint after you collect all of the yellow checkpoints. So remember how I said we should really avoid ramps whenever possible? Well, normally I would go around this big building we're about to run straight through. And there's a very good reason for that. But we landed on our tires, so everything's okay. It probably saved us a lot of time to make that incredibly reckless jump too, but normally I would have gone around it. Or slowed down at least. But either way, we're fine. We still have two Nitro Boosters left, and we're undeniably in the lead. Have the most checkpoints collected. Sometimes the game will play shortcuts that are incredibly obvious right in front of you, such as this one. And it's a good idea to take those shortcuts wherever they present themselves because you can bet the AI is going to be taking the same shortcut. They seem to know exactly where all the shortcuts are and how to utilize them. I can't tell, by the way, if the rain makes the handling more difficult. I wouldn't be surprised if it did, but I honestly can't tell. Anyway, it's a fairly straight shot to the goal at this point, and we're in the fastest car on the track. We just used our last Nitro Booster, so unless something goes horribly wrong, we should win just fine. Well done, more luck. Less judgment, but well done. You're not as bad as you look. You need to find the New York camp now. So now that we've cleared out two of the Hookman's group races, we have access to the city champ, and we could immediately go after him, but we're going to take out Larry first, whose races should be significantly easier now that we have the Ari on our side. My name's Kareem, and I am so fresh that the girl can't tell nothing left. I'm the champ! 